Hi everyone, in today's lesson we are going to look at finding the ratio of three quantities. Okay, now at the end of today's lesson you should be able to use ratio to show the relative sizes of three quantities. It's fairly simple because if you understand two quantities, three quantities is no problem. Um, and then you express equivalent ratios using three quantities. Again, it's similar to a two quantity concept. Write the given ratio in its simplest form. Again, it's similar to a two quantity, and then find the missing number in equivalent ratios. Again, it's all similar to two quantities, so not difficult. Now let's look at a word problem. Now John has two hundred dollars. Mary has even more. She has four hundred dollars. Esther has three hundred dollars. So the question is asking, what is the ratio of the amount of money John has to the amount of money Mary has to the amount of money that Esther has? Okay. So now we are comparing these three people. John. Mary and Esther. So this is what we're comparing. Now what's the ratio? John, I have two hundred dollars. So I'm gonna write this down because ratio we can also talk about it in terms of actual quantity. So John two hundred is two. Mary is four hundred dollars is two. Esther would be three hundred dollars. Okay. Now, obviously, we're not going to leave the answers like that because you know that we should always make it in simplest form. So I can actually divide this. Divide by hundred. So what I'm doing is I'm actually cancelling the two zeros. Same thing. I divide by hundred. And finally, I divide by a hundred here. So actually what I'm doing is I'm just cancelling all the zeros because they have two zeros each. So this becomes 2 is to 4 is to 3. So the ratio of the amount of money that John has to the amount of money that Mary has to the amount of money that Esther has, 2 is to 4 is to 3. Okay, so 3 quantity is just basically adding one more quantity but the concept, everything still remains the same. If I can group the money together, John has two $100 notes, Mary has four $100 notes and Esther has three. $100 notes. So what I'm doing, that's what I'm doing when I'm simplifying, I'm grouping them together. So let's try this, complete the equivalent ratios, okay, so I know that this is 10. So from 5 to 10, I times 2. So if I times 2 here, I need to do the same on all sides and all quantities. So 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 2 is 4, so it's 4 is to 10 is to 4. Why don't you try this on your own and see whether you can get it right? Okay, let's check. So 2 to 6 is times 3. So I will times 3 here. And I will times 3 here. So this gives me 12 is to 9 is to 6. Did you get it correct? I'm sure you did. Okay, now let's do the reverse. We are supposed to express the ratio in its simplest form. Um, not this kind of reverse. Excuse me. Okay, much better. Right. So, let's see what common factor we have here. 12, 4, 2, I can actually divide by 2. So, I divide by 2 here, I divide by 2 here, I divide by 2 here. So, this gives me 6 is to 2 is to 1. Can I simplify it further? Although you might be tempted to because 6 and 2 can be simplified further, but remember this, when we are trying to simplify a 3 quantity ratio, all 3 must be divided by the same number. So 1 I cannot be, 1 cannot be divided by 2 because that would give me half. Okay, so this will be my simplest form. What are you trying? Let's see whether you can do it. Okay, let's see. 7, 21, 28. What is the common factor here? Hmm. Ah, 7. So let's see. Divide by 7. If I divide by 7 here, yeah, I can divide by 7 here as well. So 7 divided by 7 gives me 1. 21 divided by 7 gives me 3. 28 divided by 7 gives me 4. So 1 th is to 3 is to 4, and that's my answer. So those are the easy parts. Let's look at a little bit more challenging word problem. So now John has half as much money as Mary. The ratio of the money that Mary has to the amount that Esther has is 4 is to 3. 
Okay, so then what is the amount of what is the ratio of the amount of money that John has to the amount of money that Mary has to the amount of money that Esther has? Okay, so I need to combine all three together. So first things first, what are we comparing? So let's look at the first statement. So let me highlight this statement. First statement, John has half as much money as Mary. Okay. So let's solve this. This shouldn't be so difficult. So I have John is to Mary. So I know that if I have a fraction, half as much money, so that means that John has one unit. Mary has two units. Okay? So John, one unit. Mary has two units. So it makes sense. John has half of Mary. So if Mary has two, John has half. He only has one. Okay. Now, then let's look at the second statement. So the ratio of the amount of money that Mary has to the amount of money that Esther has is 4 is to 3. So this time round, it's Mary is to Esther, 4 is to 3. Now my job, and the question is asking me to, for the ratio of John is to Mary is to Esther. So that's what the question is asking me. I Let me write this down in a different color. So what I want is for John is to Mary is to Esther. But my ratio is separate. I have two separate ratios. How do I combine them together? Okay, I know that John has one unit. Okay. Mary, she here she has two units. In this case, she has two units. In this case, she has four units. So which is it? Is it two? Is it four? What, what, what do I write down here? Esther has three, so okay, maybe I can write three here. So how do I do that? Now in this case, we need to make them the same. So let's look. Which one is repeated? Which identity is repeated? Yes, Mary. In both ratios, Mary's identity is repeated. So this is what we call repeated identity. So can I make 2 and 4 the same? Oh yes, I can. If I times 2 here, I got to times 2 here. So this becomes 2 is to 4. Now if you look carefully, Mary is both 4. So Mary is 4. And what is John? John in this case now is 2. Esther is 3. So voila, I'm able to combine all three ratios just by making what is repeated the same. So look for the repeated identity. So in this case, it's Mary because she is repeated in both ratios. Make hers the same so that I can combine and form my ratio with three quantities. Simple, right? So now you, look at this word problem. It's going to need a lot of your brains. So get your brains thinking. Look at this problem and try and solve it. We will come back to class and we will discuss our solutions to this problem. So at the end of today, I hope you are able to understand or able to use ratio to show the relative sizes of three quantities, able to express the equivalent ratios and from there able to find the simplest, uh, find the ratio in simplest form and given an equivalent ratio to find the missing number. And also one more objective is to actually learn about repeated identity. Okay, take care.